Chapter 13, Business Structure Options, the Legal, Tax, and Risk Issues. This is an important chapter as you guys move towards your rough draft for your first business plan. And obviously something that you need to tighten down before you submit your final draft at the end of this course. So what are some legal structures that you can take as a business? Well, you have your business here, your idea, your 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 plan, if you will, you can take one of four paths. You can be a sole proprietorship, and we'll talk about what that means later on in this chapter. You could be a partnership where you're working with someone, whether it be a general partnership, a limited partnership, or a limited liability partnership. Um, you could be some sort of hybrid where you are an LLC or a joint venture. LLC is limited liability corporation. It's kind of half sole proprietorship or partnership and half corporation, um, which allows you some leeway with how you address your liability. And then, of course, we have what people know as the corporations. You're incorporated. Um, but the types of incorporations. You can be largely a C or an S corp. Um, we'll talk about that what, that, what that means here in a second. Or, and you can get what's called B Corporation Certification. We'll talk about that as well. One of the things I need you guys to take away from this discussion is I see you guys using terms like CEO. I see you using terms like owner. I see you using terms like partnership, but then they conflict with your business plan later on when it says, hey, it's really just a sole proprietorship, but I'm going to be CEO. CEOs only exist in corporations. So if you're a sole proprietorship, you can't be a CEO of your corporation. You can be an owner. Um, if you use the word partner, you need to make sure you're a partner, not an LLC. Okay, so it's an opportunity for you to educate yourself in terms of the lingo and then also legal structure here. Now, so let's get started. I'm going to roll on down here. One of the biggest things that you need to establish is your business purpose. In fact, that should be your first sentence of your um, executive summary, which you're adding to your rough draft this week. What is the purpose of your company? If it's to make a ton of money, you're a for-profit. Um, if it's to carve out a you know a profitable return, you're a for-profit. But if it's to serve some sort of uh, social good or solve some problem for society and you don't intend on making profits, you're going to plow all of your... What, Profits under a nonprofit situation are called excess revenues. So if you're going to be a nonprofit, there's a legal structure to that. You can't just say you're going to be a nonprofit. For tax reasons, you have to register in the state and get approved as a nonprofit. So, for profit versus nonprofit businesses, what are the characteristics of a for profit business? They're designed to create profits that are going to be distributed to the owner or owners. There are a lot of different structures you can take. Corporations, LLCs, partnerships, sole proprietorships being examples. What are some characteristics of a nonprofit? A nonprofit is usually dedicated to serve public interest and further a particular social cause or advocate for a common shared interest. In a lot of ways, they solve problems that might not otherwise get solved. Things like schools and colleges and universities are nonprofits. Largely. There are some for-profit universities out there. Watch yourself. Uh, public charities, such as the United Way, you got religious organizations. Um, nonprofits are usually tax-exempt, categorized by the IRS, meaning they don't pay any income tax on the money they receive through their organization. So, but those organizations have to be created under state law, and they're subject to federal and local laws as well. So you can't just declare yourself nonprofit and not pay taxes. You've got to actually be approved as a nonprofit. Otherwise, you're going to end up in trouble with the IRS. Scooting on down here. Corporations. What is the difference between a C Corp, an S Corp, and a B Corp? Well, a corporation, in general, is a complex business structure created by filling the appropriate documents uh, with a state of incorporation. There's an example on the next page, I believe. Um... You have to have an Articles of Incorporation. It's a <clears throat> significant investment up front for a legal structure to call yourself a CEO, to have a CEO. They are separate legal entities from the owners. So a corporation is going to be taxed by the IRS and the state, the state uh, revenue services. Um, 
the corporation is going to be taxed, and then the corporation is going to pay you a salary, and you're taxed on your salary. So when you say you want to be a corporation, you're actually subject to double taxation. A lot of businesses, unless they need to raise significant capital up front and they want to go public and sell stock, a lot of businesses do not start out as corporations. So a lot of you that are saying you're going to be CEOs in your business plan, that looks great. I guess you could put it on a business card, but you aren't a CEO. It makes you kind of look like you don't know what you're talking about there. Here's an example of the state of blank, let's say state of South Carolina, Certificate of Incorporation for a Stock Corporation. Um, a lot of these documents, you go to the state's Secretary of State. Yeah, I know state twice. So like the State of South Carolina Secretary of State's office website, and you can pull all of these these files here. Now, at about 100 bucks in 20 minutes, you can make an LLC. It's going to take thousands of dollars to do articles of incorporation because you're going to need to involve a lawyer and perhaps even an accountant to make sure you're set up properly. So what are, what are corporations, what are the differences? Well, corporations are looking to raise capital, okay? So the reason why you become a corporation is you're looking to maybe get investors or shareholders. You also have a board of directors and you have your officers. That's where the CEO resides. So a corporate structure is really like a three-part deal here. You have investors and shareholders, you have a board of directors, and you have officers. It is a complex legal organization that you just can't say, hey, this is what we're going to be. If you say you want to be a corporation here, that's fine. But I also want you to explain why you're going to be a corporation and how you're going to become a corporation and which lawyer you're going to use and what accountant you're going to use. And remember, we're using a minimum viable product here, so we're probably looking at something like a LLC, which we'll get to here in a second. Now, let's differentiate between C corporations, S corporations, and B corporations. An S corporation is a pass-through entity where shareholders report and claim the business's profits as their own and pay their own personal income taxes out of it. So a pass-through organization is something where you don't declare the earnings on a corporate level. You declare them on a personal level on your individual income taxes, and they're taxed there. A C corporation, on the other, on the other hand, is, a, is uh, levies taxes against the owner's personal income tax reports. Um, <clears throat> and if that corporate income is, excuse me, distributed to shareholders as dividends. So... A S corp is a pass through. You pay it on an individual level. A C corp, which is a lot of the corporations you guys see when you see Inc. after a name, um, they are taxed on a corporate level, and then they pay their employees, and their employees are taxed by the IRS on a federal and then a state level as well. So it's a double taxation situation. Again, these are very complicated legal structures that. If you're going to open this can of worms in your business plan, if you're going to call yourself a CEO, I'm going to want to see you back it up with this legal structure and how you're going to get there. Now, what is a B Corporation? It is essentially just a certification, if you will. B Corporation is a business that meets a very high standard of social and environmental performance, public trans, uh, transparency, and accountability to balance profit with social purpose. B corporations can be either C corps or S corps, but you have to obtain this higher level of transparency, legitimacy to be able to call, be called a B corp. So, corporations. You can have nonprofits, which are not taxed. Again, legally, you have to explain why you're a nonprofit and give me the steps as to why your business is going to be granted nonprofit status. For-profit C-Corp, you're taxed at the entity level, so the uh, corporation is taxed, and then you pay yourself a salary, and then that is taxed. A for-profit S-Corp, um, taxed at the individual level. This is the pass-through, and then a B-Corp is a for-profit C or S with a higher level of transparency and credibility, if you will. I don't expect any of you to be a B-Corp. There might be some not-for-profits in here, but I'm going to want you to give some serious justifications of how you're going to obtain and maintain that status. Then you have to make the decision if you're saying, hey, I'm definitely going to be a corporation, whether you're an S-corp with the pass-through or C-corp with the double taxation issue. Again, here's a certified B corporation. Um, let you read a little bit more about that in terms of the transparency and credibility. Now, 
Corporations um, can be privately or publicly held. A public corporation is in reality, they say, quasi-governmental entity. I don't, I don't really buy that explanation. It's not governmental. It's public. All right? Just because something says public doesn't mean the government's involved other than taxing you. Um, but it's an entity owned or sponsored. Man, see, yeah, yeah. Oh, a public corporation. I see here. Public corporation publicly held. Okay? I'm jumping down here. A public corporation is a quasi-governmental entity. It can be owned, say, by partly a town. What I was starting to explain, pardon me here, is publicly held corporation, which means its shareholders are in the public. The Green Bay Packers are publicly held. The residents of Green Bay own stock in the Green Bay Packers. In fact, the, 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 I believe the, not the state, but the town, the city of Green Bay actually owns something, so they can be a public corporation too. So it's a little bit of gray area there. What you guys know mostly are either publicly held corporations or privately, privately held corporations. Publicly held corporation, again, is an entity in which the members of the investing public own stock in the company. So they are owners. If you own enough stock, you have more say. If you own like one stock, not so much. Privately held corporations, although more common in Europe, there's a lot of them in America as well, is a company that does not allow its members, uh, does not allow members from the investing public to own stock. So, like the founders, friend, family and friends might own pieces of it. Investors might own pieces of it. Um, so, for example, Facebook, it, it went uh, what public in 2012. Before that, it was privately held by the founders. Okay, and then it started selling so- stock, and then it was held by the public. Okay, sorry about the mix-up here. When I saw public corporation, I saw quasi-government. You know me. I started thinking government sucks. A corporation, if it's a public corporation, is owned partially, at least, by the government. Okay? If it's privately held, it's owned by its owners, its founders. If it's publicly held corporation, it's held by its stockholders. Okay? Either way, they're all corporations, right? you got to decide what type of corporation your business is going to be. Unless you don't want to be a corporation at all, scooting, scooting, scooting. Here's nonprofits. This is a good example of a nonprofit. Uh, a little more S corp, a C corp. Unless you have something like a partnership, which is a business entity formed by two or more individuals or partners, each of whom contributes um, something like uh, capital equipment or skills. Uh, capital being financial investments here. The partners then share in the profits and losses, and a partnership can contract its own name, take title assets, or be sued. It's, you can sue or be sued. A joint venture is, in essence, a temporary partnership that two businesses form to gain mutual benefits. So there are two entities that they partner, partner together with. Some of you guys are actually proposing joint ventures, but you didn't know to call it a joint venture. If you have, say, a food business that's going to partner with a college, that's a joint venture. That's a part of your strategy. All right? It's not a partnership. It's a temporary partnership. It's not a permanent partnership. It's a joint venture. Now, what are the types of partnerships? Well, there's general partnerships which are created when two or more in- individuals or entities agree to work together to operate a business for profit. They both have the incentive to work together. That's just very broad. A limited partnership or an LP um, may uh, have at least one general partner or one and one or more limited partners. So you have kind of a, a main entity and then you have someone you're temporarily partnering with. Uh, limited partners' liabilities typically capped at their own investment. So again, notice I said limited um, if this company gets sued, if they're a limited partnership, the general partner is going to be the one mostly on the hook. The limited partner will be limited to their investment in that, in that, excuse me, this is what I was trying to highlight here. The liability is typically capped at their investment. That's the limited part, LP. All right, limited liability partnership. Now you're starting to get wiz- you're starting to get wise. When you're talking about sole proprietorships, partnerships, you need to limit your liability. That's why I've been harping each week in my feedback on where's your liability insurance where's your liability insurance because if you let's say frank start a business you open up a a mechanic shop and you accidentally cut somebody's brakes and they get in a car accident they can sue you frank but if you're frank llc they can't sue frank the individual they can only sue frank llc 
On top of that, your business is going to need some liability insurance to be able to make sure that it has adequate coverage in case something like that happened. Limited liability partnerships are common with businesses such as law firms or accounting firms. The partners are licensed professionals with limited liability for financial obligations related to contracts or torts, that's lawsuits, or violations of a contract. So the full liability for their own personal mal mal malpractice. So they carry their own malpractice insurance if they're a physician. That's a limited liability partnership. Um, you'll see stuff like LLCs, LLPs, limited liability partnerships, uh, limited liability corporations, which I really want to get down to. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Joint ventures, doing business together. Joint ventures, joint ventures. Limited liability companies, here we go. An LLC, limited liability company, is a hybrid of a corporation and a partnership that limits the owner's liability. What I've been hinting at for the last, what, 14 weeks is that most of you will start out as a limited liability company and an LLC. Like I said, 100 bucks and 20 minutes at the South Carolina State Secretary of State's office, you could have your LLC. I'm not saying you have to do it for this class. I'm just trying to tell you how it actually happened. Every business that I've ever started has been an LLC right out of the gate. Why? I need to protect my personal liability. If I start a fitness business and someone gets injured in it, either my employee or one of my clients, I don't want them to sue Jonathan Kiesler. I want them to sue Jonathan Kiesler LLC. Because Jonathan Kiesler LLC can go out of business if it gets sued too much. Jonathan Kiesler LLC also has liability insurance, which will cover things. So Jonathan Kiesler LLC does not have to go out of business. Notice I keep saying Jonathan Kiesler LLC. Not Jonathan Kiesler. Jonathan Kiesler is protected by his LLC. You definitely need to read up on this. I say 90% of you are LLCs out there. All right. LLCs can be taxed a couple different ways. You can tax them. Uh, depends on if you're a sole proprietor within an LLC, whether you're a partnership in an LLC. Um, nine times out of ten, they're what they call pass-through uh, organizations, pass-through companies. So they're kind of like that S-corp where if I earn money in, say, my consulting business, and it's an LLC, I claim that money at the end of the year on my individual income taxes, and then I pay taxes on it that way. If it were not a pass-through, I would have to pay quarterly corporation taxes where I would pay my taxes ahead of time. And it's a, it's, it's for a, it's a business that's irregular, meaning it's not open every day, I only take on contracts here and there. Um, so some years I may make a good bit of money in it. Some years I might make none. The, the great way of doing a pass-through is that I just claim it on my taxes. Now, everybody's like, well, can't you just cheat and not claim it? Yeah, that's a great way to end up arrested, to end up fined by the IRS. That's a terrible approach. That's why we created business ethics for you guys. LLCs largely are pass-through organizations. Now, sole proprietorship is a business entity that is owned and managed by one individual and has very, very little formal structure and no mandatory filing or registration. This is Frank's mechanic shop that has zero liability coverage, and it's just him. He's like, well, I'll just fix tires. Well, what if you cut the brakes? You're in trouble, Frank. All right? You can be a sole proprietor have an LLC. I do it all day long, but you need to make sure you cover your liability with an LLC and liability insurance. And that's what it comes down into when we start talking about advantages and disadvantages of the others. Um, you can contract. You can be freelance. That's some other entry-level structures that are low investment. But $100, uh, you can get liability insurance for like $12 a month. Um, $100 bucks one time to get an LLC with the South Carolina State um, Secretary of State's office in 20 minutes and you can have your LLC you can have you LLC and then for 12 bucks you can get approved online in 20 minutes for liability insurance that'll cover you there too why would you not do that why would you not cover yourself it just makes no sense again if you're looking to get a ton of capital you need to be a public corporation a C corp where you're going to get double taxation yet you can raise a ton of money by going public that said if you go public right now with nobody knowing anything about it, no one's going to buy your stock it's going to be worthless you're going to have to find a way to get known. So how do you get known? You start out as an LLC, you build yourself up, then eventually you plan to go to a privately held corporation. You get really attractive with lots of locations, everybody knows about you, and then you have what's called an IPO. Um, 
an initial public offering of your stock. That's when your corporation moves over to being publicly traded and people jump all over your stock and you have some value and you raise a ton of capital in a short amount of time. Um, surprisingly, that actually hopefully made some sense. Uh, equity crowdfunding, please don't say GoFundMe. There are so many different ways to crowdfund these days. Please don't say GoFundMe. That's just begging. You're the guy at the, at the daggum intersection with the cardboard box saying, feed me. Um, don't do that. Don't do that in this class. It's going to not get you good grades. Uh, oh, right here. Great. Figure 1310 is a great breakdown of C Corps, S Corps, Sole Proprietorship, General Partnership, Limited Partnership, and my personal favorite, Limited Liability Company LLC. That is a great breakdown. Um, so you can see here your owners are an un unlimited number of members allowed. In terms of your liability with an LLC, members do not have personal liability. You're taxed as a partnership. You could be a pass-through partnership. You have articles of organization or forming or operating agreements. Some of you are actually doing this with this business plan. And the management is managed by members of collective, uh, collectively or managed by a single member. You guys had to do that in the operational section. Um, and members contribute their own capital. Now, if you come up here with a C Corp and S Corp, you can have shareholders who are buying your stock. All right. Generally speaking, sole proprietor, lots of liability. Okay. General partnership, lots of liability, just divided by the number of partners. Limited partnership, some li still liability, but limited on the people who are more limited. You're only on the hook for whatever it is you put in with the business. LLC protection. A lot of you are using language that goes with the C-Corp or the S-Corp, but really you're an LLC. Okay? To me, these ones in the middle are non-starters when you're thinking about your liability. That's just the amount of risk I'm willing to take on. Mitigating and managing risk. I'm going to let you read that section. Um, for how you're going to manage that. That said, most of you, 90% of you, need to be an LLC with some liability insurance coverage. Loading, loading, loading back here. And that is my quick and dirty overview of Chapter 13, Business Structure Options, Legal Tax, and Risk Issues. Have a good one. Schedule an appointment if you need to talk for office hours.